very beginning of the interview. Do you remember that? No comment. It's exactly what you said. No comment. I found that very interesting, and I'll tell you for why. Because you didn't deny it. No comment. You didn't say, it's not me. No comment. And at no stage over the last two days have you denied any involvement in these offences. No comment. Why is that, Levi? No comment. Why haven't you sat there and said, jumped up and down and shouted from the rooftops, you've got the wrong person? No comment. I find that very strange. Did you get a kick out of being involved in, in these sort of inquiries? No comment. Do you think it's a, a macho type of thing to bring it? No. Do you think it will help your notoriety? No comment. Do you honestly believe that your actions over the 21st and the 22nd of March 2002 are the actions of an innocent man? No comment. Then are you an innocent man? No comment. Because if you are, tell us. No and give us that explanation for where you were and what you were doing. No comment. Are you able to do that, Leroy? No comment. Sarah's told you what she believes you did that particular day. And I wholly support what she says. I believe you took her off the street that day. I believe your motivation was sexual. And I believe you took her back to Collingwood Place. And I believe you killed her there. That's the truth, isn't it? No comment, sir. That's what happened. And then you've used the day of next year to move her body. Is that the truth? No. Comment. That's what's happened, isn't it? No comment. And then sometime over the following few days, you've driven down to Hampshire, an area that you know, and you've dumped her body. No comment, sir. That's the truth, isn't it? No comment, sir. Right, are you Shifrahim, formerly Levi Belfield, publicly respond to the allegations made today? Wednesday the 29th of November 2017. Firstly, let me apologise to Mr Sean and Josie Russell for publicly raising the horrendous event of the loss of their loved ones. On Monday the 27th of November 2017, I was made aware by other in inmates that inmate Richard Baker, a convicted child stranger rapist who is serving a life sentence for his crimes, has made allegations to Mr Stone's legal team about myself. Mr. Baker is on record as a fantasist, manipulator and compulsive liar. To hear such rumours about him was to be expected given his character. He is known, he is a known fantasist and his latest endeavours to pervert the course of justice are an example of his character which seeks attention and publicity. It appears Mr. Ma Mr. Baker has made an allegation of a so-called cell confession. In my view, such vile, untrue allegations do not warrant a response. They are what they are, the words of a lonely, serial, stranger, child and adult rapist who craves the spotlight. I hold no hard feelings towards him and can only pity him. However, given the circumstances, I will respond later in this statement. Reference Mr Stone and his position. From day one, I have endeavoured to help his legal team if not only to clear myself from crimes he is convicted of. I offered him a polygraph test, which I also would take, but he refused. Yes, they hold no, no, no weight in law, but nevertheless a public platform to build on. I have signed authorities to release my DNA samples from the police. I have written many letters of invitations to Stone's legal team, inviting them to come and take my samples, DNA, hair, blood and fingerprints. All declined. This being factual evidence, copies of my letters to and from them have been released publicly and in September to the editor of Converse Prison Paper, Mark Leach, who ran my story on the front page. Ooh. What was most alarming and in my view very misleading was the BBC programme The Chillingdon Murders screened on the 6th of June where it stated I refused to give my DNA samples. This could not be further from the truth. I've been offering my sample since 2015. I've done all I can, as previously said. I again invite any media agency to take my samples or even attend HMP Franklin and witness me personally taking a polygraph test. In the circumstances, this is all I can do. On Wednesday the 28th of November 2017, my solicitor Judy Cooper informed me an email from the BBC had been sent to her asking for a response to a so-called cell confession. 
the contents of the email related to various allegations within the alleged cell confession. They were Red Ford, burnt out, 1996, wore gloves, holiday to Turkey, a methodology of the crime, and a list of 91 alleged offences. One, the Ford Sierra GLSI hatchback in 1996, registration number E959ARH, was the only red Sierra I owned in 96. This was purchased from my stepfather. I used the vehicle and sold it on. It was never reported stolen or burnt out. This is fact. DBLA historical records can confirm this, and also a check of the police uh, national computer confirmed it's never been reported or burnt out or reported stolen. Two, wore gloves. A weak conspiracy. Most criminals wear gloves. Furthermore, this flies in the face of Stone's defence team who claimed on their BBC programme, The Chilling Doom Murders, of 6th of June 2017, that they had a partial print of who they said came from the culprit of the crime. Three, methodology of the crime. This was publicly aired on TV on the 6th of June 2017. Mr Baker took notes about this programme and was witness, and there are witnesses that can confirm this. He was obsessed with the crime. Four, a list of 91 crimes from sexual assault to serious offending. No list exists. I'm not convicted of any sexual offences. This is fact. Holiday to, holiday to Turkey. I cannot see how this has any significance to the Chillingdon murder case. In any event, I flew out in, nine, in the summer of 1996 and found it was too hot and returned the following day. And finally, Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker is a category <laughs> high risk, a Category A high-risk sex offender who is a proven liar and, and a manipulator. Baker spent years in prison and, and hospital and had thousands, thousands of hours of therapy at Broadmoor Hospital. He fooled psychologists and therapists into believing he was cured. As such, he was sent to a medium secure unit two years ago. Upon giving this trust, he manipulated a staff member to smuggle in an electronic tablet into the hospital for him. When caught, the police found vile child porn, which included the rape of a four-year-old girl. So much for him being cured. This highlights his powers of manipulation to lie and fool psychologists at Broadmoor, a top hospital. Baker was convicted and sent back to prison. The trial judge called him a fantasist. His prison records also reveal him as a compulsive liar and a fantasist. God help Mr Stone and our justice system if Mr. Baker's manipulation and lies are relied upon. Thank you. Yusuf Rahim, formerly Levi Belfield.